As we celebrate the great solemnity of Pentecost, we're aware that it marks the fulfilment of the Easter event of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus through the gift of the risen Lord's Spirit. The Church has prepared us in days leading up to Pentecost with her prayers, with the repeated and intense plea to God for a renewed outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us. The mystery of Pentecost constitutes the baptism of the Church. It is an event that gave the Church the initial shape and the thrust of its mission. Pentecost Sunday is one of the most ancient feasts of the Church, celebrated early enough to be mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles and in St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. It supplants the Jewish feast of Pentecost, which took place 50 days after Passover and which celebrated the sealing of the Old Covenant on Mount Sinai. According to Jewish tradition, the Ten Commandments were given to Moses 50 days after the per first Passover, which freed the Jews from their bondage in Egypt. Thus, the event of Pentecost is represented as a new Sinai, as the gift of a new covenant, in which the alliance with Israel is extended to all the peoples of the earth. In the new covenant, that the Holy Spirit writes in the hearts of those who believe in Christ. From the very beginning, the Church is one, Catholic and apostolic. She is holy, not due to the capacity of its members, but because God himself, with his Spirit, creates her, purifies her and sanctifies her. Pentecost is the feast of human unity understanding and sharing. We can all see how in our world, despite us being closer to one another through developments in communications with geographical distances seeming to disappear, understanding and sharing among people is often superficial and difficult. There are imbalances that frequently lead to conflicts. Dialogue between generations is hard and differences sometimes prevail. We witness daily events where people appear to grow more aggressive and belligerent. Understanding one another takes too much effort and people prefer to remain inside their own sphere, cultivating their own interests. In this situation, can we really discover and experience the unity we so need? It is true that we have multiplied the possibilities of communicating, of possessing information, of transmitting news, but can we say our ability to understand each other has increased? Or paradoxically, do we understand each other even less? Doesn't it sometimes seem like feelings of mistrust, suspicion and mutual fear have insinuated themselves into human relationships to the point where one person can even pose a threat to another. Let's go back to the initial question. Can unity and harmony really exist? How? The answer lies in sacred scripture. Unity can only exist as a gift of God's Spirit, which will give us a new heart and a new tongue, a new ability to communicate. This is what happened at Pentecost. On that morning, 50 days after Easter, the flame of the Holy Spirit descended on the gathered disciples. It came to rest upon the head of each one of them and ignited in them a divine fire, a fire of love, capable of transforming things. Their fear disappeared. Their hearts were filled with new strength. Their tongues were loosened and began to speak freely in such a way that everyone could understand the news that Jesus Christ had died 
and was risen. On Pentecost, where there was division and incomprehension, unity and understanding were born. Only recently, on the 12th of April, Pope Francis reminded us that the Holy Scriptures are the testimony of God's Word in written form. However, the centre of our faith is not only a book, but is also a history of salvation, and especially a person, Jesus Christ, the Word of God made flesh. Precisely because the Word of God embraces and extends beyond Scripture, to understand it properly, we need the constant presence of the Holy Spirit who guides us to all truth. The Holy Spirit animates the Church. So sacred Scripture is the Word of God inasmuch as it is consigned to writing under the inspiration of the Divine Spirit while sacred tradition takes the Word of God entrusted by Christ the Lord and the Holy Spirit to the Apostles and hands it on to their successors in its full purity, so that led by the light of the Spirit of truth, they may, in proclaiming it, preserve the Word of God faithfully, explain it and make it more widely known. Consequently, it is not from sacred scripture alone that the Church draws her certainty about everything which has been revealed. Therefore, both sacred tradition and sacred scripture are to be accepted and venerated with the same sense of loyalty and reverence. Dear friends, we must live according to the spirit of unity and truth. And this is why we must pray for the Spirit to enlighten and guide us so that we may overcome the temptation to follow our own truths and instead to welcome the truth of Christ transmitted through the Church. St Luke's account of the Pentecost tells us before rising to heaven, Jesus asked the Apostles to stay together and prepare themselves to receive the Holy Spirit. They are gathered in humble and confident expectation that the Father's promise communicated to them by Jesus would be fulfilled. They waited together in prayer with Mary in the upper room for the promised event. Like the first Pentecost, today the church gathers with Mary and prays. Veni Sanctus Spiritus, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. The Holy Spirit is represented as the breath of the risen Jesus. With baptism and confirmation, we are given this gift in a special way. And with the sacraments, of the Eucharist and penance, it is continually repeated. The Lord breathes a spirit of life into our souls. All of the sacraments, each in its proper way, communicate the divine life to humankind, thanks to the Holy Spirit who works in them. The purest meaning of Pentecost is that it is a time of renewal for Christian believers. Pope Benedict engenders for Catholics a renewed focus on evangelization. At Pentecost we pray for empowerment from the Holy Spirit, for a deeper intimacy with God and for a unity in our church. For Christians, the celebration of Pentecost imparts faith, hope and a sharing community and an awareness of a purpose much greater than ourselves. I would like to finish with a quotation from Benedict XVI in his Pentecost sermon in May 2012, where men situate themselves in the place of God 
they can only find themselves struggling one against another. Where, on the other hand, they place themselves in the truth of the Lord, they open themselves to the action of the Holy Spirit, which sustains and unifies them.